finally getting to a Yakuza game. I've been a fan of this series since getting Yakuza 4 on the PS3. They plan on getting every Yakuza or like a Dragon Platinum trophy. Ideally, I would have loved to get them in their release orders, but I don't have all the games right now, so I'll just have to get all of them out of order, starting with Yakuza Kiwami. Haruka would be his way out from the Yakuza life. He doesn't want to be the chairman anymore and realizes that it's gonna be a lot safer getting out and starting a new life with Haruka. Yakuza 6 The Song of Life is so much easier compared to Kiwami. A big part of this was the fact that I didn't need a 100% the completion list. Out of the 285 things to do, I only needed 100 things to do. This is also the first game with the Dragon Engine, and of course, there's going to be some differences. Everything is voiced in this game, including all sub stories. It doesn't have the text box show up at any point, and while this is great, this time could have been used somewhere else, like the heat moves. The one heat move that I used throughout most of my playthrough was Heat Rush. When I activate extreme heat mode and start punching people, it would prompt a QTE, having Kiryu just constantly punch the hell out of the enemy. And a reason for this is because there's no ground heat action. I can't go up to an enemy that's on the ground and then just use a heat move. I don't know if this was just forgotten about, but it really suck not being able to do that. The combat at the start is very slow, and while it gets better with upgrades, Kiryu just doesn't have his known dragon style moves. I don't think it's bad, but if this was going to be Kiryu's last game, which now it clearly isn't, maybe changing up his combat wasn't the best idea. I do like the way getting XP and upgrades work. There are different types of upgrades that are colored, reddish for strength, blues for agility, yellows for spirit, green for technique, and purple for charm. Depending after what sub story or boss fight you do, there's usually a big amount of XP you get. I do like the upgrades from Yakuza 4 and 5 with the soul upgrades, but something about having to decide where to put your upgrades to each of the colors, I think it's also another good upgrading system. And this is minor, but being able to walk into M store or any store that can be walked into without a loading screen is great. Just being able to walk in, buy some food items or whatever, and then walk back out is a great quality of life change. Since I didn't need to do everything, most of the things that I did were minigames, clan creator, and sub stories. The one missable trophy was the baby minigame, which I didn't realize was a minigame because there's only one time where this can occur, and it's when you're at Onomichi where Haruto can wake up and how to put him to sleep by either swinging or lifting him to put him back to sleep. It's alright, and it doesn't last too long, but he will wake back up if you don't do the objective really quickly. So just get through this quickly and then just complete whatever it is that you need to do. Fantasy Zone was alright. I played this airplane or flying character where I had to shoot other things that were moving and get the highest score and change your weapons to put the store and fight a boss after doing certain things. I always make it to the first boss fight and then pretty much die afterwards because the list doesn't require much of me to do and I'm not interested in playing anymore beyond the first boss fight. Outrun is really fun. I remember playing this in Yakuza 0 and having a hard time with it and when it came time to playing it this time, it wasn't as difficult as it was in 0. I think I knew what I was expecting, so all the failures I had in 0 prepared me to get at least 3 million points. As long as you're in high gear the whole time and not crashing a single time, then you're most likely to pass 3 million points. I didn't play Puyo Puyo, which would be a mistake on my part in a future game. Welcome to the fan. Space Harrier is also another really fun game. It was a fast paced rail shooter that required 2 million points. The game wanted me to make choices real fast so that I wouldn't get hit and once I got 2 million points then I just kill myself. I do pretty much the bare minimum because these games already take over I don't know 40, 80, 100 hours even. So I'm not going to try to get like the highest score ever. Once I reach the requirements I move on. Super hang on is like Outrun, but now I was on a motorcycle and needed 4 million points. In terms of difficulty, it's probably about the same as Outrun. Played it in zero, struggled with it, and then it paid off when I played it again. <laughs> And then the last arcade game was Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown. I'm not too familiar with 
the Virtua Fighter series. The only one that I know of is Virtua Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown because it uses the Dragon Engine. I don't know the differences between Final or Ultimate Showdown aside from graphics and maybe the online wasn't as good. But playing Final Showdown, I enjoyed it. It's probably the only fighting game that is purely a fighting game. There's no fatalities, rage arts, or smash ball. You just fight, which is nice that there's a fighting game out there that's just pure. But I also think it might be the reason why it doesn't have a big audience, at least in the US. It doesn't do anything flashy to gravitate towards a casual audience. I've never heard anyone talk about this series and the only reason I even know it is through Yakuza, which is great that RGG can put a bunch of Sega games that Sega doesn't seem too interested in. They like to pretend that Yakuza and Sonic are the only games they have access to, but now after the Game Awards, they are making and using their other games now. Some of the mini games are returning ones like the batting center darts which is now great. I don't have to use the tip of the dart to aim. There's now a meter on when you throw the dart. Karaoke of course is back. Manjan which I didn't touch at all because I didn't want to deal with RNG. The rest of the mini games were new. Bar chat was boring. I had to go to a bar and befriend the people who are always there. And after one session, I looked up a guide because there were answers that was the correct one. And since I'm already not interested in what they're already saying, a guide helped me get past the minigame relatively quick. And there are some sub stories tied to it, so I did all of them. There was a baseball minigame where I could recruit people to my team, train them by having them play a full game, or using an item to quickly level them up, and the minigame itself was okay. I wanted it to end as quickly as possible. It's not an in-person baseball game, it's like this board game baseball game. It was just alright. Cat Cafe I didn't realize was a minigame. I just fed cats food and then their level or friendship level thing will just level up. Again, it was just okay. Live Chat is a minigame made for very lonely people who are in a parasocial relationship with the girls they were talking to. I was tasked with successfully chatting with both girls and had 30 successful chat entries. This was another okay minigame. My first initial reaction was this should be fun, but the more I went along, the more I lost interest in it. Rizap or the gym minigame in theory and on paper should sound like a good and fun minigame where Kiri easily lifts like a thousand pounds or something like that but instead it was Kiri working out normally and struggling with it. Like with most of the new minigames it was boring or in this case it should have been more of a ridiculous minigame. And the last one is spearfishing, which is the best one because it's essentially a rail shooter done underground and I had to catch a bunch of fish and beat a final boss for each of the stages. It's not too surprising that I like this one because this is a type of game that Sega likes making back in the arcades, which is an arcade rail shooter. And I got a good amount of money, but it isn't the best way to make money. All the new mini games except for spearfishing I didn't like at all. They replaced prior mini games that were better. The clan creator minigame has its own section because it has a story after beating bosses. This was also okay and I thought I would just play it for a bit and then move on but no. There are two reasons why I had to win all missions. The first reason was that there was a trophy for completing all the missions and the second being that it's the best way to make money. So whether I liked it or not, I went through the entire story of the clan creator and got a good amount of money. A lot of the sub stories I didn't like or care for. A good chunk was the new mini games and I didn't like any of them. There's a new snake flower triad leader and that story felt kind of flat. Kiri comes across a Haruka fan and it was alright. Chasing the drone and cleaning robots didn't do much for me. There's one about cats which I forgot about. There are only a few that I actually liked. Sub story 6 was the one about the YouTuber where this kid wants his 15 minutes of fame by doing anything. Tries interviewing Yakuza members and sees Kiryu's and fails. The kid then gets involved with other Yakuza members and is hanged upside down and even then he thinks it's awesome and doesn't want to delete the video because it'll get so many views and likes. Kiri even gave him a chance to get out and stop it but sometimes some people are stuck in their way and refuse to change. Pocket Circuit Fighter is back and it was nice seeing him again but he doesn't seem to be happy. He's working at his parents tofu shop and has a son now but they're not really close to each other because his wife thinks that he's a bad influence on their own son which means he's not allowed to be himself and help his son like he did to Kiryu and the other Pocket Circuit kids. His son clearly wants to know more about him and ask Kiryu about what he was like. This all leads to the fighter putting back on the suit and fighting alongside with Kiryu and being a hero to his own son. Tells his wife that he wants to spend more time with his son and needs to be 
more of himself and the wife accepts, Paga's sugar father at least now can live a happy life, spend time with his son, which is what makes him the most happy. I like the curse of Onomichi because ghosts were involved. Kiryu comes across a graveyard and he sees a ghost and fights it because it's what you normally do whenever you see a ghost. Every time he wakes up on his back at the graveyard, he meets a gravekeeper and says that the ghosts were his ancestors who were pirates and mercenaries and has been finding a way to cleanse the graveyard and wants Kiryu to cleanse it by constantly fighting them for about three or four times and the graveyard has been cleansed. Kiryu talks to the gravekeeper one last time but then it turns out that the gravekeeper himself was also a ghost so it ends in a really creepy way and Kiryu just has to live with the fact that he was played by a ghost. And then there were a few sub stories with the Ono Michio. I liked all of it because how can anyone not enjoy being the Ono Michio? This mascot is just great. The Amon fight wasn't difficult at all. I got through it on my first try, although I almost died because of the drones. I was on easy difficulty and I still had trouble putting down Amon because his drones kept on coming in and I had a spam heat rush to put him down. I can't imagine anyone doing this higher than easy. Other than a fun or not even a fun challenge, just a frustrating challenge on Legend, this fight would be annoying to deal with. Most of the fight is fine, but then once the drones start coming in, then it's not fun anymore. To make getting the platinum trophy even easier, there's a known glitch where if you make a manual save right before the last boss fight, you can go back to your manual save, change the difficulty to legend, and beat the final boss again, and the legend difficulty trophy will pop up. It still works in 2023 and doesn't require you to replay the entire game again. <laughs> Yakuza 6 picks up immediately after the events of Yakuza 5 where Kiryu is bleeding out and Haruka is by his side. He's taken to a hospital and Akiyama mentions to Haruka that it probably wasn't a good idea to tell the whole world that her adoptive father is tied to the Yakuza and Tojo clan who prevented another war with the Omi Alliance. The police come in to arrest Kiryu because there needs to be consequences for what happened between the Tojo clan and Omi Alliance and Kiryu is pretty much a scapegoat so that the public can be at ease. Kiryu's in prison while Haruka and the rest of the kids at the orphanage are on their own. Since Haruka gave her speech, there have been news articles and social media saying that the orphanage is secretly a place to raise Yakuza members and just things that are made up. This causes Haruka to leave and go on her own adventure. Kiryu is released four years later and now has to go find Haruka only to find a baby named Haruto who turns out to be Haruka's child. So he goes to Onomichi with Haruto to find answers. So I don't really care about this game's story and it's mainly because of the new characters that are introduced and how much I don't care about them. By the time I got to the end, I felt absolutely nothing. This was Kiryu's last game, which we all know it's not, but having new characters come in wasn't doing it for me. Where were Majima, Saijima, Daigo, and other characters that were connected to Kiryu in the past? They were nowhere to be seen. The entirety of the Hirose family, I didn't care about. The game made an effort to make me care, but I just couldn't. Haruka leaving because of comments said about the orphanage sort of goes against her character. I get seeing terrible comments about you or the people that she loves, but she was raised by Kiryu and because she's affiliated with them, she's been through a lot involving Yakuza stuff. So leaving because of some comments and the perception of the orphanage seems like a weak reason for her to leave. <laughs> There's also a mystery surrounding who the father is for Haruto and the father turns out to be Yuda. His reason for not speaking up and thinking that it was his child was that he and Haruka did it only one time, which is a very lame excuse. How the hell does he not question Haruka if it was his when she brought Haruto along with her? Yuda as a character, he's fine. I don't really care if he comes back or not. The main villain Iwami, I felt nothing about the guy. He burns down Little Asia and probably does something evil and doesn't revert back to being a good person. But you know, he's there. He's the villain, I guess. <laughs> There are things I do like about the story. Ed is a big imposing dude that shows up every now and then to fight Kiryu. That is all he does and it's what he needs to be. <laughs> Akiyama being in the game is always going to be a great thing. Having to fight him in that small ass room because Kiryu is too stubborn was good and then having him come back at the end to help fight was also great. 
Soumaya is the one villain that stands out because of his ideals and beliefs that contrast to Kiryu's ideals and beliefs. He doesn't believe that having a back tattoo makes you a Yakuza. He thinks it's ridiculous and the tradition should go away. He doesn't have to hurt civilians and working a honest job is a much safer way to be a Yakuza. While Kiryu sees it as a person's ideals and the life that they've chosen to live, it's the one part of the story that I thought was the most interesting. Maybe getting a giant back tattoo while cool isn't what it used to be anymore and there could have been a lot more there. And then Kiryu leaving everything so that he could keep Haruka and the kids safe was a good end for him if it was truly his last game. A politician comes in and tells Kiryu that he wants him to keep quiet about certain things and rather than keeping the hush money, he wants to be erased from existence. He has Date keep the secret. Kiryu can have what he wants or at least a part of it which is to be left alone. Ever since the second game, he's wanted a way out from the Yakuza lifestyle and there's always something that brings him back and so with him being dead, no one can go looking for him about challenging him or making threats towards the the orphanage. Just kind of wish the journey on getting here was a bit better, but it wouldn't matter because he comes back. 